Hi, this is Vanessa with Designs by Vanessa. Today's tutorial is on the Tunisian Honey Bee um, Cow. So this is what the design looks like. Um, it's worked with two colors. Okay, so let's talk about the materials that you'll need. So I'm using a double-ended hook. I used a longer cable for the red one I just showed you. And, um, these are Denise interchangeable hooks and I do have to let you know if you're pl planning to purchase these. Um, they only come with one hook for each size. I actually purchased two packs so that I could connect the ends and make it a double-ended um, crochet hook. Um, you can work this with a long double-ended Tunisian hook and I don't have one to show you but it it would look something like this with with a hook on one end and a hook on the other end okay I will provide a tutorial for using the straight hooks but for this project I am using a circular hook so I'm using two different colors um, in super bulky weight yarn this is hometown USA category 6 uh, super bulky and it is 100% acrylic and the two colors that I'm using is Madison Mustard and the blue one is, let's see, Fort Worth Blue, okay. And you'll need a pair of scissors, a tape measure if you plan to make a different size and it is adjustable, a tapestry needle with a large eye for the weight yarn you're using and a stitch marker to mark the beginning of your round. We are going to be working in the round. Okay, so I did switch to a longer cable because I decided to make a larger piece instead of just a sample. So you wanna start with the color that uh, will be this red color here. So I wanna start with the blue and then I'll have the yellow sort of underneath. So I'm going to chain 40, nine stitches, which is just two less than the pattern. So I have 49 stitches and I want to join my round by working a slip stitch into the first chain stitch, yarn over, pull through, and through. Okay, make sure that your chain stitches is not twisted okay so now you want to start picking up loops all the way around so you can mark this one as your first stitch and then you can either go through two loops like this and then yarn over and pull up a loop or you can work in the back humps, okay, and work it that way. That gives it a nicer edge. So if you look here, see how it has a nicer edge because the two loops are on the edge instead of the one if you decide to pick up the loops um, the first way I showed you. Okay, so just continue to insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop and leave all of the stitches on your hook. So work that all the way around. Okay, so I went around and picked up loops all the way around. Now I want to turn my work okay and so we were working with this hook previously now you want to start your return pass with um, the other end of the hook okay so let me grab my contrasting color the yellow one and then just create a loop and place it on your hook and then you want to pull through so that would be your chain one, and then you want to yarn over and pull through two. Yarn over and pull through two. So 
So you want to repeat this step for your return pass all the way around to the other end. And if it gets too tight, you can just tug on this to slide the stitches over. When you're done, your, the hook will pretty much be off of your uh, loops. Okay, so I'm almost done going all the way around. All right, let's tighten that a little bit. Okay, so now that we've worked the return pass all the way around, you want to turn your work again and work on the other side, starting with this hook, since we just worked with that hook. So if you keep turning your work in the same direction, your yarn is going to get tangled. So I'm laying it flat so that I can show you. Just try and keep it, you know, in the same area so that you don't get your work all twisted. So I'm sliding this back. Okay. So I want to now work in this direction with the blue yarn now. And here is where I marked the first Stitch. So to start this pattern, you want to alternate a Tunisian simple stitch and a Tunisian purl stitch in each of these vertical bars. Okay, so we'll start with a Tunisian simple stitch. You want to insert your hook through the vertical bar, yarn over, and pull up a loop. Keep that on your hook. I'm just going to pull on that to tighten that one. Now you want to work a Tunisian purl stitch. So just like in knitting, you want your yarn in the front and then insert your hook into the next bar and then you want to yarn over and pull up a loop. Okay, so Tunisian simple stitch in the next one with your yarn in the back now. Okay, so another way, let me, I'll show you a few ways to do this. So another way um, you want to work the purl stitch is move your hook behind the yarn, and pull it forward and lift your thumb up to hold it and then insert it, your hook into the vertical bar and then let go and yarn over and pull up a loop. Okay, Tunisian simple stitch with your yarn in the back and then I only noticed I did this when I slow down um, but when I'm moving at my own pace I just like the last time put my hook behind and then just I don't lift my thumb up or anything, you just insert it into there and then I keep my thumb here to hold it down, yarn over and pull up a loop. Okay, so alternate between the two. Let me just show you quickly how I do it at my own pace. Okay, so Tunisian simple stitch, Tunisian purl, Tunisian simple stitch, and Tunisian purl. So just like knitting, the purl stitch has a loop that goes across your stitches. So you can tell which one's purl and which one's um, simple stitch. Just in case you let go of your work and you came back to it. So here's the, a purl stitch. So I want to work a Tunisian simple. Tunisian purl. Tunisian simple. So work this alternating each stitch all the way around. Okay, so I'm near the end. I have three stitches left. Here's my stitch marker. Um, I've just completed a purl stitch, so I want to work a simple stitch, a purl stitch, and in the last one, let me get this out of the way. So this last one here is going to be a simple stitch. Okay. Because this one is a simple, when you start your next round, you want it to be a purl because you want to um, alternate and the simple will go over the purl stitch, the purl will go over the simple stitch. We have completed the blue color. We want to turn <laughs> and um, making sure we don't cross our yarn. And it's not the end of the world if you do, you just have to untangle it. So now we want to work the return pass. 
And remember, it's pretty much the same step for the return pass. Yarn over and pull through two. Yarn over and pull through two. So again, repeat the return pass all the way to the other side. Okay, so I have a couple more stitches and the last one. Again, I'm just going to tug this a little to tighten it. And um, now we want to flip our work again. Okay, so I'm going to flip. And we want to work in this direction. So I'm just going to pull on my hook so that I'm back on this side. Okay, so here is my stitch marker, and we started with a simple stitch. We ended with a um, simple stitch as well, because the next stitch, since we're working in the round, needs to be a Tunisian pearl stitch. So you're working a pearl stitch over the simple stitch, a simple stitch over the pearl stitch. See, there's a little um, bar right there that indicates that's a purl stitch. So into the first vertical bar, you want to work a purl stitch. And then a simple stitch, and then a purl stitch. Simple stitch, and a purl stitch. So repeat that all the way around. Okay, so I'm back all the way around and I've just worked a simple stitch now I want to work a, oops, a purl and then a simple and a purl okay now I want to turn my work again and work the opposite direction so Yarn over and pull through two. Okay, here's my last stitch. Okay, so now I want to turn my work. Let me just take this out real quick. Sometimes it's easier just to remove that when you, um, after you work your return pass. Okay, so now I want to work in this direction again. So this is my first stitch here. So you want to basically repeat that first round starting with your simple stitch and then your return pass and then you're starting with the purl stitch and then your return pass and then you start all over again. Okay, so you repeat those rounds um, until you are happy with the size of your work. And then I will show you how to cast off. Okay, so this is a pearl, so simple. Okay, so I just completed a return pass. And I am okay with this size, okay? So to close up, you need to work another forward pass to cast off, okay? So I'm going to cut the yellow strand. And then I want to Yarn over and pull through to secure that. Okay, so now you want to cast off. I removed the rest of my hook so that I can just work with the one hook. Okay, so insert. So this, you want to work in pattern. So this is a purl stitch, so you want to work a Tunisian simple stitch, pull up a loop, 
and this was a simple stitch so you want to work a purl stitch okay now with two loops on your hook you want to also pull through the first one okay so this is a purl you want to work a simple yarn over pull through and through next one purl stitch through and through okay simple stitch through and through so this is how you close up you want to still work in pattern um, making sure you work a simple stitch in the purl stitch and a purl stitch in the simple stitch so this is a simple so we'll work a purl and then you want to pull through all loops Okay, so I have two stitches left, and this is a simple stitch and a purl stitch. Okay, so now I'm going to cut my yarn and I'm going to just pull this through, grab my tapestry needle. Okay, so because we're working in the round, you can tell it's um, sort of a spiral. So when it came back around, it just sort of just ended right there. So it's not really going to be even. So what you want to do is insert your needle through the very first V sort of stitch right there. Okay, and then pull it through. And then you want to go back into the loop that this strand, this working yarn came out of. So in there, and then gently pull it. So now it looks like, so now it's connected and looks um, sort of seamless. Okay. And uh, I would tie a couple knots on this. It's really up to you how you wanna weave in your ends. So you want to take out your stitch marker and the same thing with this side. So I'm going to go into the next stitch and come back around. And sort of pull that together. Okay and tie these together and then just weave in your ends. Okay, so because we are working in the round, you will see that it's not really, because it starts right here, and then it goes back around, and then it's sort of a spiral, and then it ends right there. So this one, I'm working 49 stitches. It's about 11 inches, and six and a half. So it's about 22 in circumference. The red one is a little bit larger okay as you can see um, not that much wider because I did only adjust it by two stitches so it's very customizable um, just make sure that you cast on or chain an odd number of stitches um, for this stitch pattern to work and then you can work um, as tall as you'd like um, this was using pretty much a full two skeins of the um, Hometown USA by Line Brand and then I used about half 
for this one. Okay, so that's what's left. Okay. All right, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe for future videos.